actually here. Uh, I was uh, adjunct lecturer here at Penn and also at Temple. Uh, the year that students uh, were really actively beginning to organize um, around uh, lobbying for a cultural center. There was a rally on college, um, right in front of College Hall, um, where students, faculty, and staff came and, and um, talked about the need for a place like Patch. When people think of rallies and you think of you know, rallies that ended up with uh, a positive resolution for the people that are protesting or they want something to change, um, you might imagine hundreds of people, right? You imagine a big mass of people. And I think at this rally, there maybe were 20 of us. <laughs> and you didn't need crowd control or anything, right? It's very, it's just a small, very modest size um, event, but it, I think it made a difference. I was a very young student leader at that time and got, I felt like I, I was sort of hugged by the elders of the Asian American community, uh, the, the leaders of APSC who I think were the, the real strong rallying force behind um, the push to make, to, to create an institution like Patch. And then even after we, we, you know, the university approved of the Asian American Resource Center, like then how do we design and really build the resource center from the ground up? I had no idea at the time, personally, that I would actually consider applying to be director. I was just really surprised that students you know, held a rally, that it garnered attention. I think it was on the local news. To this day, uh, especially when you look at media and politics, you know there is sort of a dearth of Asian American leadership, and I think that's why we started a Poly. That's why we had a Wally, which was the Asian American Women's Leadership Initiative, and why we really felt it was important to also have Oracle, the Senior Honor Society for Asian Americans. The first Asian American president was Bat. His name was Wilson Tong. So this is the 42nd year of the UA, and I'm the first um, Asian American female to be elected president. I really feel that Asian Americans should be running for student government or should be going for major leadership positions on campus. They say your college years are some of the most formative years of your life. Um, and I honestly can't imagine having grown up without Patch. Um, sometimes I think it wouldn't have happened otherwise, um, but I mean, it just contributes so much to making um, students comfortable with who they are, making students, um, or forcing students almost to develop a social conscience. And I think that's a really big part of um, just growing up in general. Patch serves a different role for each person. I think for some, I think Patch is kind of an oasis um, after a long day of, of school or kind of an oasis between a hectic day of classes. Um, I think for others, I think Patch kind of represents a community um, for of, of friends and family that they can kind of always turn to. You know, Patch is always here, and I think if they're having any issues or they want to, you know, kind of reflect on a day or, or a year, I think Patch is, is always here. Now we have a kind of home away from home on campus. It creates. Uh, comfortable space for us. I would want to see students using these resources to really strive toward uh, creating a just and equitable society um, and that it's not about um, just strengthening you know our own racial community or um, making sure that we understand our identities um, but doing that for a purpose of um, making sure we join other social movements, um, um, creating our own social movements, but keeping the goal, um, social change, social justice, you know, human rights. I think one way of sort of trumping any sort of stereotypes or sort of prejudices um, one towards has any one has towards any group is to recognize that a group is definitely not uniform. Just because um, you may look similar, there's still a very diverse, um, you know history behind every individual. Everybody has a story. Everybody's story is different. The issues that we talk about here on campus of self-segregation or of model minority myth, you know, do play out but also don't play out when we look at immigrant communities here in Philly. Um, 
So I think sometimes we're, we're limited by looking at just the, the campus and trying to expand that discourse is one issue that I'm really, really passionate about. I do hope to see like a cultural shift in the way that we approach um, you know, service or the way that we approach community engagement. And if that's something that I can help with, then you know, I'm happy to do it.